Well, it is uh, just about six, six, six in the morning, one hour later. And when we finish, it was six hours into the day of uh, Tuesday, August 11th. We need our time and date stamp at the beginning. Because uh, I can't remember what day it is uh, 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 more often than not. So when you go back and edit, you want to know where things are, how it aligns up. I do have some indicators, but th th there seem to be, in terms of when I was last editing, there seemed to be some confusion. So uh, I'm making a better effort to uh, to sort of correct these mistakes and make uh, the editing more streamlined. I'm still a little off on the editing. It's very hot in here. Uh, I I'm typically not without I'm typically typically without a shirt, but I put it on for the video. Uh, I just feel, finished at Danielle Tannerite's uh, channel. She was interestingly enough. I thought she was just going to you know just do simple colors on a phone case. She was painting her phone case, but she actually did a painting. She put a painting on a, a phone case. So that's the first time I've kind of seen that. But it was an interesting, interesting DIY. And this, this is kind of the thing, when you go to different channels, and then this will be interesting with the new YouTube vlog, the YouTube stroll, that I can stay in one particular area more than I did before, and get a better sense for all around the family, as you see different perspectives from different people within the family. And this is something to sort of enjoy. Well, uh, it's not the end of the vlog. You might be expecting the end of the vlog because it is just about 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let me just check the date and time. Well, let's take the date here. It's August 12th. It's uh, Wednesday, August 12th. Again, need the time and date stamp here because I can't remember what day it is. And when I get over to edit, this sort of uh, helps me sort of align things. This is not the end of the vlog. Even though typically this will be the time for the end of the vlog, because our day is shifted, and this is what happens when you're working on a 24/7 uh, 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 schedule. Uh, when you sleep, really depends on what's happening during the day. So it's not a set sleep. It's not you know, uh, you don't go for eight hours and and and, and wake up again. It is typically you're doing uh, four four hours. You're doing four hours at most. That's what's uh, producing the um, shortages of sleep because sometimes things happen. You have to get up and repair it. There's uh, um, uh, I'm at the uh, uh, gaming desk. I do my gaming here at my research desk. There's an observational. Uh, uh, there are observational uh, things from the satellites. I say things because I don't want to get too specific about it. Uh, that I have to, I have to check the, uh, the, 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 what's going on, the observations have to be done just every three hours or so. So what happens is that it depends on, uh, what you've done and what the schedule is like. That sort of determines when you, when you sleep, how much you sleep. Uh, so some, you, sometimes you can let it go for four hours before you have to make an observation and take your notes down. And so that way you get you get a little bit extra sleep. Sometimes there's no there's there is no option but because your body's tired and you have to do 5 maybe 6 hours of sleep because there's because the body just has doesn't have the energy to continue on further. But it is it the days are productive. They do uh a uh, 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 sort of you get progress made. I, I have uh, today I had the delivery of my uh, electric scooter. I had the, the battery came in came in the week uh, the week before. The scooter came in today and so I've already begun assembling it. It will take me another day or so to finish the assembly and then uh, it will be all ready to go. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to uh, you know uh, to, to riding it, and 
Yeah. It is uh, just about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, it's time to end the vlog for... Uh, well, it's the, end, it's the ending of Monday's vlog. It's Tuesday. I think it's August 12th. I can check. Let me do that. Let me check and make sure I got the date correct. Yeah, it's August 12th. I just finished with It's Our Life. Uh, I'm going to go on to uh, Brindley and Capri's uh, channel next. This is my the new YouTube stroll. Is there's enough content at each place because there are now individual other other individual channels beside the family, uh, so I can sort of take a tour around the uh, the neighborhood, if you will. Uh, they were talking about uh, their experience with the. Uh, an almost shark attack. Uh, I can't remember what beast they were at, but uh, and you can sort of see the fear that they, the fear in their face that 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 uh, you know the fear of being eaten. Of course, uh, being a Greek and a carnivore, I think the shark would be more afraid once they realize he's a, you know the, the shark is watching me and I'm watching the shark. To see who was going to end up eating who. <laughs> uh, I, before that, I was at uh, the Yowie Vlogs. The Yowie Vlogs are, are, are quite interesting. They're, they were showing uh, the, 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 where they are in terms of the, the desert and, and the environment. There was a, uh, a sort of a wildfire there. You can't really call it a forest fire because there's no real forest. What it is, is, is it's the scrubland uh, of dry grass and so on and so forth and it's so hot there that it just catches fire sometimes and either that or there's a lightning strike that causes the uh, the fire to start and because of the, the the area is so dry because there's, it, it's because of the heat that it, it, it does catch fire and it spreads it, it gets into uh, it goes into a, a larger uh, event than it would be if it were cooler or during a rainy season. And that's the thing, that the fires come in in these places, there's a hot season, a dry season, and when you have the hot, dry season, uh, that's when you would have your fires. When you have the uh, wet season, uh, you don't have the fires, because the, if you, even if you have a lightning strike, there's enough water in the wet season to put out the, uh, to put out the fire. And what happens is the people try to do their best in between. Human beings try to do their best in between, but it doesn't always work. Typically, Mother Nature decides what what she wants to do. Well, that's one way of sort of personifying it. Not necessarily Mother Nature, but the, the, the complexities uh, are of weather and how the system interacts is so far beyond us that the... The assumption that we can control this is, I would say, almost to the point of lunacy. It's crazy. It is we're too small to have that to have that that type of impact, whether it's positive or negative. Now that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to not that we're going to we're not going to destroy our own environment that affect that will affect us locally, but in terms of the Global damage. It's in terms, you know, from the the atmospheric perspective, of atmospheric physics, it's just simply far beyond us. And people say, "Oh, there are weather machines out there." You can tell, uh, you know, there's uh, uh, geoengineering. Well, you look at the satellite. You look at these. And this is one of the the, uh, the observational images that I have is, uh, as I have access to these satellites, and I've got a composite that allows me to do the thermodynamics in the atmosphere. And part of the, the the project is identifying what part of the atmosphere is what. And that took me close to six years to do. And at no point in time did I ever see these so-called contrails be ha have a massive large effect. They just they don't show up in the satellite at all. And even even within the concept of thermodynamics, 
And people say, well, water vapor can't do that. Until you actually understand that all of the atmosphere is, is most of the atmosphere is, is water vapor. And I understand even the simple, comp the simple physics of a cloud. Then you begin to understand that water vapor has a lot more capacity than we assume or give give credit to. And so what happens is he goes and talks about after like his the the, the dad talks about uh, bullying because everyone's going back to school now, and so the topic of bullying and cyberbullying pop pop up. Well, the thing is, is I was never a. a, a Social type of person. I was always a nerd or geek, a, a dweeb, or, or whatever. Another term is now weeb. And you always felt separate. You always felt outside the crowd. You never felt part of the crowd. And of course, there was always that that situation is that no matter what dynamic you were in, no matter what crowd you were in, the dynamic of the loser always ended up being my title. I never sort of was able to sort of stand above that title. But the thing is, at the same time, I found ways to sort of enjoy myself. I forgot about the title and just sort of went and did whatever I wanted to do. So it comes, it's back to that model, no refunds. Someone come up to me and they'll like me for maybe five, ten minutes and think, hey man, this guy's kind of strange, but I'm not going to hang around with them too much. It doesn't matter. It's no refunds. <laughs> you know? So, I, so I've been on... I, I, I've been on the bullying side of things for a long time. And you, you... It's something you get used to, but it's also a matter... It's a matter of... It's a matter of perspective. If you always consider yourself a victim and... Or you have a disability and you say that, Oh, I can't do this because I'm disabled. Or, or In other words... You don't try to do things or find ways to sort of augment whatever incapacity you have or some some of the capacities you do have. Some things you can do, some things you can't do. Others, other things you're going to have to find a workaround. I mean, this is this is what, doing exploration is always doing that. I can't afford the, the the large equipment and expensive equipment that most research labs do because I'm independent. But at the same time, I don't have people tell me what I can and cannot research. I'm not restricted in any manner. Where the other researchers who are at these larger larger uh, facilities, they're highly restricted in terms of what they can and cannot do, what they can and cannot say. And so there are, there are benefits, there are trade-offs, and you learn how to, in my environment, you learn how to be creative. 